Hi, I'm Randy Altman with Post Perspective. We're here at NAB 2022, and this is Marcus Schuler from High Vision. Marcus, hello. Hi, it's nice to see you. It's good to see you. So um, you are at, so tell us a little bit about High Vision, because I know it wasn't typically a company that played in, in the area that we covered, yep. um, but you are now. So yep. um, why? Okay, well, let me start with the general thing. So High Vision does video streaming and networking technology. We're used often in broadcast, but you, for live broadcast production, remote production, sporting events, news, that kind of thing. So that's very common. Uh, what happened, uh, I would say it started probably about two years ago. Uh, I, there's a long story, okay? So I'm gonna like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of wind my way there. Does, does the pandemic have anything to do with this? No, no, this is pre-pandemic. So, okay. so actually, I, no, I'll start with the long story, okay? okay? So High Vision five years ago, because this is actually one of our news things at the show this year, we started this thing called the SRT Alliance. So this was an initiative around an open source bit of technology that High Vision developed originally, and we enabled it uh, to, you know, to be available in the open source community through this group called the SRT Alliance, which existed to get companies to basically come in, uh, try out SRT, and then you know, take the open source libraries and implement it in their products. What it does is it does point-to-point uh, -point live streaming, um, high quality, low latency, over any network, including the internet. And it was something that was very important for our customers, especially if they were trying to do coverage from the field and, and they're using the internet. Uh, it's not always predictable. And, and SRT provided a way to ensure that you would get high quality video, even if the, even if the internet was a bit iffy. Was it mostly sports productions? Uh, it's, it's certainly sports, but uh, but you know, High Vision deals in broadcast, it deals in enterprise, it deals in faith, the faith market, it deals in defense market. So it's used anywhere where your network is unpredictable well, it doesn't have to be unpredictable, but if it is unpredictable, it helps you protect against image problems. So ultimately you get good quality video at low latency, which is important in live. So that we did that five years ago. A lot of people jumped on board early to, because they saw the promise that they, you know, and companies like Microsoft got involved very early and Avid got involved very early. So this is where Avid comes into the picture. We started talking to them about SRT. They were very interested. And then uh, I want to say two years now, a little bit more than two years ago, they introduced, no, I'm sorry, it was just last year. They introduced uh, a new thing called Media, uh, Media Central Stream, which allowed them to do IP ingest into Media Composer workflows from the field. So instead of using satellite or dedicated network or even file transfers, they could just live stream into the Media Composer, well, into the Media Central Stream, that would do growing files, the editors could start working on them, yep. and they were getting that right, right from the field using SRT. So that was cool. We were working with them already at that point, and, and they actually are, are a partner of ours that uh, are able to sell some of our hardware for their workflows to enable those workflows. But then there's the, the whole other side of things, which is where things started to really get, I think as people understood the implications of, of, of using SRT um, and the pandemic, they started to say, well, wait a second, we also need to be able to see what's going on in the edit room. So now we need to kind of figure out how to decentralize our uh, review and approval process and the director can't be sitting there anymore so they had this there's they call it over the shoulder workflows which is traditionally sure. somebody sitting in the suite and looking over yeah. the shoulder and that i don't like fix that do that do that but they needed to remote that so what they were looking at was what do you do to give people the ability to see the screen and they, they'd already been remoting the operator so operators could work with their systems from anywhere but they also wanted to enable the the experience of watching the output of, of the monitors mm -hmm. so you could see the timeline playback so they realized that SRT was a, a really good enabler for that because the latency is important. You don't want to be watching with a 40 second delay. You want to be, you know, yeah. and you might have multiple people that need to watch at the same time. So uh, in different locations. So having it, you know, low latency where they're kind of seeing the same thing at the exact same time is very important. So they introduced SRT output from their timeline um, so that basically you could press play and it would stream out an SRT stream. So is that part of their um, edit on demand? Um, uh, well, edit on demand, uh, so I'm not, I'm not an avid expert on all of their offerings. I think edit on demand means editing the cloud. So, okay, uh, so they don't... They don't um, but it does mean Media Composer, in whether it's, I don't know what edit on demand exactly is, but Media Composer in the cloud or Media Composer on a workstation can do the same thing, where it can output an SRT stream. The SRT stream then needs to get sent to whoever needs to watch it. And where we get involved is we help them with the process of taking that, that one stream and either replicating it so it can go to a bunch of different locations at the same time. Because like editors don't want to deal with IP addresses. And no, they just want to edit. They just want to edit. And yeah. the directors definitely don't want to deal with that kind of stuff. Yeah. So you, we, like we get, we get the creative process here. These guys are not interested in, in 
deal detail, you know, that, those type yeah. of details. So, so what happens is that high vision comes along and we put some of our technology in, in the middle of the workflow. So we have a thing called the high vision SRT gateway, which basically will take in an SRT stream from Avid. It can be running in the cloud. And then it will allow you to send that same SRT stream to a whole bunch of different people. Uh, and each of those may have their own viewing requirements. Like they might be sitting in a suite and there's a projector, or they might be looking at a high quality broadcast monitor, or they might be looking on a laptop, or they might be looking on their phone. Mm -hmm. They might be you know, somewhere out running around trying to watch something while they're on location somewhere or whatever. So th there are different devices that High Vision provides from software players to dedicated low latency hardware decoders that can do 4210 you know, 4210 bit color precision and stuff like that, depending. It's not just Avid that wants to do this, it's also color grading. Uh, you know, other types of people sure. are also kind of needing the same workflows. I mean, everybody's at this point is kind of looking at these workflows. And uh, one of the things that we, you know, we, we learned uh, over the course of the pandemic, as people were trying to figure out how to adopt these workflows, was, uh, you know, the, the, the technologies that enable it became critical. SRT was a fundamental enabler that enabled people with, to deal with the challenges of the pandemic. And what Avid are doing now are really taking this. And uh, I guess I, I would put it like this. So one, one thing that High Vision does is a, kind of an, a, an effort to understand the trends in the industry is we produce this thing called the, the Broadcast IP Transformation Report, where we survey people in the industry. We ran a survey this year we got 650 respondents or something, so quite a lot of people. And one of the things they said about their workflows as it relates to the pandemic and the change in the hybrid nature of how they're working is they're not going back to the old way. They're moving on. Right. They're going to continue to use these hybrid workflows. Sure, there will be people in facilities, but the benefits that they've learned about will allow them to continue to, to do this. So now that Abbott is is enabling this, it's not, you know, this wasn't a pandemic thing. This It, it will continue to be important. That's right. Probably yeah, these, these workflows are not going away. Yeah. So, um, and and I'm assuming that you don't have to be a technologist to to run it or to to, to add it to your workflow. Well, what so uh, what I know about what Avid are doing, and I don't know, maybe you're talking to them, but they, they're at the they're demoing at the Microsoft booth a workflow with Media Composer streaming out SRT from the timeline. It's going into a High Vision product called the High Vision Hub, which allows you to basically take that one input and route it to multiple different locations. And it's one of the things it's doing is it's going directly into Microsoft Teams. Okay. And so then, some, because normally Teams is working using WebRTC, which is for video conferencing, so you can have you know interactive conversation. It's not designed for review. The quality is you know it's not meant to be sure. picture perfect where yeah. the pixels are all you know. So, but what they what they've introduced is this thing that that Microsoft have called the BDK. It's an open source initiative with Teams that allows Teams to take in SRT. And then it gives you a, a good quality image that you're able to uh, use for, for review and approval using a team session. So that's, you know, Avid, High Vision, and Microsoft working together on this pretty cool technology preview that's happening at the, at, over at the Microsoft booth right now. Where can people go to learn more about how you guys are enabling um, host people to collaborate? Well, okay, so there's information obviously on highvision.com, so that's a good place to go. We're also here at the show for people that might uh, be seeing this. I don't know when this video is going to be available, but... They might not see it, so they, they should go to your it. website. Definitely to highvision.com. There's more information there about, about all of our workflows. Uh, and uh, yeah, and we're happy to talk to people because frankly, we uh, you know we find the, the, the opportunity with the SRT Alliance, like we've just been working with so many different companies and there's all sorts of possibilities that are coming up all the time. And uh, yeah, so NAB, Five-year anniversary of SRT Alliance. Five hundred and fifty technology companies have jumped on board. Avid are a big user. Microsoft are a big user, and uh, they are all able to talk to you about it. Include, and of course, we are too, and happy to. Very cool, Marcus. Thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you.